very often a stage four cancer patient hears the words, you're cured. But one Roanoke man has quite the story, one he has told to anyone willing to listen. In this picture of Steve Futrell and his daughter pinning a corsage at her wedding is one of the moments he fought to live for. Steve and his wife Terry agree getting to see their two children as adults was motivation when he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. My main thrust was to ra finish raising my kids. Yeah. That's the thing that I really wanted to do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and one of the lowest parts of this process, uh, I went into my daughter's room. She was about maybe a sophomore in high school. And she looked at me and she said, Daddy, please, please don't give up. Steve's battle started in his early 40s when a doctor found a tumor on one of his lungs after a physical. Walking into my office, there's a note for me, a telephone message. Steve, call the clinic, exclamation point, exclamation point, underline, underline. And I, I looked at that and had an epiphany. I thought, he's not calling because I left my umbrella in his office. There must be something wrong. The tumor was the size of a golf ball. It was a shock to Steve and the doctor since he had never smoked. In fact, the doctor said, just go home and don't worry about it. I literally glided out of his office to the elevator and got to the elevator and pushed the button and I thought, yeah, but he's only one person. Suppose he's wrong. They, doctors do make mistakes. And I knew in that instant that I couldn't turn it loose that easily. The tumor was removed, but no chemotherapy or radiation was prescribed. It was a decision Steve questioned many times. He was told, just call us if your health ever changes. Anything new, we want to know about it. Otherwise, go ahead and live your life, and we expect never to see you again. Three years later, Steve got a cough, went in for an x-ray, and this is what was found. His new oncologist, Dr. Bill Fentel, told him the cancer was back and bigger than before. Two rounds of chemotherapy and radiation didn't even touch it. He left it that you need to go home and do some soul searching and uh, decide what you want to do. So uh, with a heavy heart, I left the clinic and realized it's looking like the 11th hour for me. Steve looks at me and I look at him and he said, I, I don't think I can do that. And I said, I don't think you can just lay down and die. The 11th hour calls for drastic change without telling anyone but his wife, Terry. Steve started juicing every hour and eating an entirely vegan diet. I got a juicer. Um, I bought my first bag of 50 pound carrots. Mm -hmm. Was so weak from the chemo and the radiation that I had to drag it literally into my kitchen. And I started uh, juicing carrots every morning at 7 o'clock. This major diet change lasted for almost three months until it was time to go back to the doctor for another test. He didn't expect his new diet to make a difference. I had committed myself to traditional medicine. Um, I didn't believe that anything else was anything other than um, um, <laughs> hocus pocus. Yeah. But what the doctor found next would change Steve's life forever. And his case was one of the first ones I remember that just made no sense to me as a medical doctor. He came in and he opened the door and he came and he's got my charts in his hand and he's literally running around the uh, the examining room and he's yelling something and shaking my papers. Dr. Fintel told Steve the cancer was gone. All of it, not even a trace. I was just excited for him and telling him that something happened that just makes no sense. It's it's a gift, it's a gift of God. You, you've been cured. It, it really is a remarkable story. Um, and uh, I, I don't understand it. I, I constantly ask myself, why me? Why was I spared? A question 25 years later he still contemplates, but giving a speech at his son's reception and seeing his daughter in a white dress are pretty good reasons for defying the odds.